Hey y'all, how's it going? Cameron here. Uh, and those photos you just saw were of me, clearly on a trip I took uh, a little over a year ago to Normandy, France, to tour some of the historical sites of D-Day, or otherwise known as um, Operation Overlord, or just the Allied invasion of uh, France in 1944. So I was thinking, uh, what would be a cool video to do next? Um, run through some ideas, and I thought, why not just talk about one of the sites that I toured, that being uh, Point du Hoc, and offer some historical context, historical information, while also going into um, what it's like today and what I saw there on my tour. So that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, so I'm gonna start out just giving a nice little historical overview. Might not be that little, but <laughs> we'll see. Um, and then we'll get into what I saw there and what it's actually like today. So let's get into it. All right, so what was Point du Hoc? Now, as I understand that, we're gonna get a quick overview of the invasion map of Operation Overlord, which you can see here. Now, notice how there are multiple beaches, each with a different code name, and each being the intended landing site of part of the Allied Expeditionary Force, or the invasion force. Now, here you can see two beaches named Utah and Omaha on the flank of the invasion, and these were the American landing sites. Now the American forces were intended to land here and push inland, whilst airborne troops dropped behind the beaches the night before to disrupt communications, take key crossroads, cities, etc. Now in between these two beaches there is a small jet of land sticking out, and that there is Point du Hoc. Now before the invasion the Germans had fortified this point, Point du Hoc, with an artillery battery that was within range of the American beaches of Utah and Omaha and could potentially devastate the landing forces on D-Day. So a side operation was launched at the same time as the other beach landings spearheaded by the 2nd and 5th range of battalions led by Lieutenant Colonel James Rutter. Now Point du Hoc as you can see in these photos here is quite literally sheer cliff faces that the rangers would have to scale to take out the artillery and their second objectives. Now the second ended up being the only one of the two battalions to land at Point du Hoc, as the fifth ended up landing at Omaha Beach due to uh, missed signaling. Now the second utilized grapples, ropes, and ladders to scale the cliffs in the face of intense German fire that had started from over a mile from the landing beaches. One of the boats carrying troops actually sunk on the trip in, so that combined with the fifth being diverted to Omaha, left the assaulting troops undermanned. The guns that the rangers were looking for had actually been removed from their positions on the point, so once the troops had taken these positions, a patrol had to be sent out to find wherever the guns had been moved to. As it turns out, they were moved back behind the point to avoid destruction in the pre-invasion bombardment. Now the guns were then destroyed, as well as the road behind Point Du Hoc taken out of action. Thus, the rangers completed their objectives at the cost of half of their attacking force. However, the fight would last two more days as the severely undermanned rangers were forced to defend their measly holdings on the point against the German counterattacks before finally being relieved. Now, the fight for Point du Hoc is, in my opinion, one of the most interesting stories to come out of the initial invasion of Normandy, and the rangers who took the point truly showed incredible bravery and perseverance. Alright, so now that we got a rough idea of what the battle looked like based on some of the photos we've seen and just the information I've discussed, now we can get a closer look at what Point du Hoc is actually like today based on my tour experiences, which is actually really, really interesting. So question, have any of you ever been to a historical site before, whether that be a battlefield, I don't know, a church or really anything? Uh, one of the things that you tend to find is these sites are generally completely changed from what they used to be. Um, they may have been rebuilt, destroyed, rebuilt, any number of things and are generally like heavily tourized, you know, with shops and all that stupid stuff. Uh, for that reason, Point du Hoc is actually incredible for one reason. It's primarily unchanged um, from what it was actually like after the battle. Now, after the battle, the majority of the site was actually left as is and eventually the upkeep of it was turned over to the American Battle Monuments Commission. As such, today visitors can see many German bunkers, numerous shell craters, and more that are remnants of the fierce fighting that actually took place here. Alright, so I keep getting sidetracked, uh, let's just get into what I saw. 
So we're gonna start with my first impressions um, coming up to the point. Uh, we parked a little bit behind Point du Hoc, um, where there's actually parking. You don't, you have to kind of walk up to it a little bit. Um, so uh, there was hedges blocking the view, and then we came out of the hedges, and then we we're kind of on the point, which you'll see in the photos that I'm about to show. So the first thing you notice is the landscape is like absolutely checkered with shell holes. I mean, they're like everywhere. They're massive. Um, right now I'm showing a couple photos of me inside of shell holes so you can understand just how massive these things actually are. And it really goes to show just how deadly an artillery or plane bombardment can be. Now generally speaking for the invasion day, bombardments on all, inv all the invasion beaches of D-Day, um, the intention was to soften up the enemy lines. However, at the same time, the shell holes um, caused by the blast could actually act as refuge for allied troops assaulting the beaches. And as you can see in the photos, you can probably understand why you could fit easily a dozen people in these things and it'd be really solid cover. Now another interesting thing came from exploring some of the ruined German bunkers. Um, the bunker on the point of the cliff, uh, the largest I saw there, was really incredible. Uh, in this photo here, uh, at the entrance to the bunker, there are actually three different holes where machine guns or rifles can fire at any troops trying to enter the bunker. So it's really, really heavily fortified. Um, with different points of um, counterfire, besides the fact that it's concrete and pretty thick. <laughs> now once you get inside, it's very expansive with an amazing view of the surrounding ocean and land. And you can really understand why the German army fortified this position with such great views of all the surrounding areas. And coming out of this bunker, uh, I had a brilliant look at the cliffs uh, that the 2nd Battalion actually had to scale. And let me tell you, the pictures don't really do it justice. These things are massive, and I cannot imagine trying to scale them uh, with defending German forces at the top firing down on you. Um, just look at it, it's pretty crazy. Um, now one other cool thing uh, was seeing the gun emplacements where the artillery guns, that was the objective of the 2nd Ranger Battalion, um, that was their objective to take out. And this bunker here is actually where one of the guns was originally supposedly uh, placed, but as the rangers found out, when they um, came up the cliffs, they'd been moved to avoid destruction by bombs, which as you can see, this bunker was clearly a little, took a little hit or something. So actually, surveillance uh, before the invasion actually showed that the guns were still in place, but in reality, they were actually just large logs put into the empty gun emplacements to make it seem like the artillery uh, guns were still there. Um, so yeah, that's the majority of Point du Hoc. Um, there's a lot of different bunkers. A lot of them are kind of like buried now um, under dirt and rubble and stuff. And it's really just a pockmarked, weird landscape um, that is pretty much exactly... Like it's been the same ever since after the battle. Uh, everything was just kind of left in place. So truly to me, this was like one of the most interesting historical sites I've ever personally been to um, due to the conservation of um, literally everything having just been pretty much left as is after the battle. Um, and I think it really helps visitors to understand uh, exactly what the battle was like as opposed to maybe bunkers being rebuilt or something um, or the holes filled in. It just helps show exactly how destructive um, war can be and also like how much of a challenge it actually was to um, take the point. Um, and for me it was also really interesting having spent most of my life reading about the place to actually see it in person and get that um, sort of first-hand perspective um, of what the landscape's like um, and all that. So yeah, definitely one of my favorite pla like places in general I've actually ever been to. Pretty cool. Highly recommend it. All right, to close this out, I hope you all liked this video. Uh, I really think a nice knowledge of uh, past and present perspectives of history uh, is a really helpful tool in learning and understanding it. Uh, and I hope I kind of got that across. Um, now, if you like the video, give a like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, especially if you like this type of video, because I could definitely do other ones on this um, in this type of vein, uh, exploring historical sites and stuff. Uh, anyway, that is all from me today. As usual, have a good one, and uh, I'll see you on the flip side.